Assalamu alaikum class. We are in week two of physics, goddess, force, and power. And this week's lesson will be on the laws of motion, the first law of God. So we will get our lesson from this quote from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, where he says, There's a scripture in the Bible that teaches that Allah God is love. The creative force out of which he created the heavens and the earth is the awesome power of his love. In that great display of love, Allah God regulates the affairs of his creatures by means of law. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that the first law is motion and the second law is order. Out of Allah's God's love, he puts all things in motion and out of his love, he, get, out of his love, he gives order to that motion by means of law. And so in this quote, the minister says that it is a force that produces motion. And in this case, it is the creative force of Allah's love, of Allah's love that puts in motion the motion of the universe. And so everything in the universe must follow the law of motion. And so in physics, we define and describe the law of motion in three parts, which we call the three laws of motion. And so that's what we're going to deal with with this week's lesson. We're going to deal with Allah's first law which is motion in that motion is described in three parts, which we call the three laws of motion. So starting off the first law of motion states that an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction, unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So what this is saying is that an object that is not moving will not move unless a force acts upon it. And an object that is in motion will continue that motion unless an object acts upon it. And so with, with this second part, it's important to note that the object uh, will continue at the same speed and in the same direction. So that's saying unless an object, an outside force acts upon that object, it won't change its direction and it won't change its speed. So it will neither uh, speed up or slow down, but it will continue at that speed in, in the same direction. So the first law of motion is sometimes referred to as the law of inertia. Inertia is the resistance an object has to a change in its state of motion. And so inertia is, is a quality that's inherent in all matter in the universe. And it's associated with the mass of an object. And so with inertia, the more mass an object has, the more inertia it has. And the less mass an object has, the less inertia it has. And so what that's saying is that the more massive an object, the more it resists uh, a change in its motion and the less mass an object has, the less it resists its change in motion. And so the Holy Quran, we, we can see a, a manifestation of the law of inertia or the first law of motion where it says, and when it is said that when it is, when it is said that to them, follow what Allah has revealed, they say, nay. We follow that wherein we found our fathers. What? Even though their fathers had no sense at all, nor did they follow the right way. And so this is a spiritual, this is a, a manifestation on a spiritual level, how even people resist changes in their state of motion. And so in this case, these people uh, received the revelation of Allah, but yet they still were resistant to the change in their ways because they were already set on that path. So moving along to the second law of motion, the second law of motion states that the acceleration of an object is as produced by a net force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force in the same direction as the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Okay, wait, stop. It, it's, it's all going to be okay. And so this is just a, a fancy way of saying that the more force that's exerted on the object, the faster that object will accelerate. So it's saying that the harder you push an object, the faster it'll move. Okay. So it says the second law states that the acceleration of an object is dependent upon two variables, the net force acting upon the object and the mass of the object. The acceleration of an object depends directly upon the net force acting upon the object and inversely upon the mass of the object. 
And so it says, as the force acting upon an object is increased, the acceleration is increased, as I said before. And the second part, where it talks about the uh, inverse proportion of the mass, it explains that the mass of an object, as the mass of an object is increased, the acceleration of the object is decreased. So that's saying if you keep the force the same, but you increase the mass of the object, that means the object will accelerate slower. And that should make sense because if you think about it, if you push a larger if you push a larger object with the same force that you would push a smaller object, the smaller object will move faster than the larger object. Okay. And so again, on the spiritual level, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad states the same law. So in our savior has arrived, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad says, submit to the will of Allah, the divine supreme being, and see how the conditions of your life will quickly change today into better conditions. So you say, where is the second law of motion? Well, going back, the second law of motion says, in simple terms, the more force you apply to an object, the more acceleration that object will experience. And so the messenger in this statement is saying that the more you submit to the will of Allah, the quicker you'll see a change in the conditions of your life. So submission being the force, the condition being the condition of your life being the mass and the change from one state of your life to the other state of your life is the acceleration. And so going back to uh, that last slide where we see that force is equal to mass times acceleration, in this statement, the, minister, the messenger is saying the same thing, is that force equals mass times acceleration. And so the messenger understood these principles because he was taught by the master teacher. And so moving on to the third law of motion, in the third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And we've heard that a lot, so we should understand. So the third law of motion, the statement means that in every interaction, there's a pair of force, forces acting on two interacting objects. The size of the force on the first object equals the size of the force on the second object. So that means that the sizes of the forces or the magnitudes of the forces are the same. And then it further says that the direction of the force on the first object is opposite the direction of the force on the second object. So that's saying that the forces have equal magnitude or equal strength, but they're just going in the opposite directions. And so it says forces always come in pairs or equal and opposite action or reaction force pairs. And so we see this in the scripture many times. And first I would like to point out, take us to the Bible where in the Bible it says, therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. And so this scripture, if you don't, if you don't realize what it is, this is the golden law, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. And again, this is a, a spiritual manifestation of a law of a of a law that permeates the universe since its, since its inception. And so again, the third law of motion says for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. And so that's what the Bible is imploring you to do. It says that do unto others as you would have done unto yourself because that is the law. And so also another scripture in the Holy Quran and put it in another way, it says, and fight in the way of Allah against those who fight against you, but be not aggressive. Surely Allah loves not the aggressors. So again, the Holy Quran tells you to fight against those who fight against you. So it's telling you to give the equal action in the opposite direction. So again, this is a law that permeates the universe, not only in the physical realm, but also in the spiritual realms.
So in summary of our lesson today, even though it was a shorter lesson, uh, these have very important implications in, in the rest of our course and what we've discussed. And so in summary, we can say that the first law of motion is the law of inertia. And the second law of motion, in physics, we like to just sum it up in a very easy to remember formula, which is force equals mass times acceleration. And in the third law of motion, it states that uh, you have equal and opposite reactions. So those are easy ways to remember the three laws of motion. In those, instead of having those long uh, statements, you can sum it up in those, those very short phrases. And so in this, um, this illustration that I have in this slide, it gives a very, um, I think a very powerful statement uh, that words you might get confused in, but as you see in the first law, you have one object that's at rest and it's staying at rest, and you have one object that is in motion and it is standing in motion. In the second law, you see that the force exerted on the object is going to be equal to the acceleration that the object it's not going to be equal to, but it's going to be proportionate to the acceleration that the object uh, experiences. In the third law, you see two objects that are uh, exerting forces on each other in the opposite directions, but at the same magnitude, as in like for like. And so I also have another um, a nice visual summary of the, uh, the three laws of motion. And again, first law is the law of inertia. The second law is F equals MA, as us physicists like to say. And the third law is equal and opposite. And the thing that they all have in common is that all matter shares these qualities. So I would like to close out this lesson with a quote from the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad from Our Savior Has Arrived. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, Submit to God. It is the nature of the black people. God does not permit you to come to him as his servant unless you submit to his will, his laws, and his rules. And so the big takeaway from this lesson is that, again, the, the ultimate purpose of submission to God is to become like him. It's because when we submit to a process and then we go through that process, we start to see the results of the end of that process. And the submission process, the ultimate goal goal is to become like God. And so the only way we're going to submit properly to God's will is by following the laws that he set for us. And if we don't know the laws and we don't understand the laws and work with the laws, we will not be successful. So thank you again for your patience and your attention. Assalamu alaikum.